Lawmaking. Judicial precedent. Ways of avoiding precedent. Distinguishing, overruling and reversing. The doctrine of judicial precedent is based on the principle of stare decisis, that is standing by of previous decisions. However, rigid adherence to precedent can lead to injustice. Consequently, the courts have developed a number of ways to avoid a binding precedent. These methods of avoiding precedent include 1. Distinguishing 2. Overruling and 3. Reversing 1. Distinguishing Stare decisis works on the principle that a precedent must be followed where the case contains the same material facts. Distinguishing operates where the facts are sufficiently different, the court is then free to depart from the precedent. This can be seen in the cases of Balfour v Balfour and Merritt v Merritt. In both cases there was an agreement between husband and wife that the husband would pay maintenance to the wife. In Balfour the agreement was not binding as it was a purely domestic agreement and not enforceable in contract law for lack of intention to create legal relations. However, in the later case of Merritt, the Court of Appeal distinguished Balfour, as in Balfour the husband and wife were happily married at the time of the agreement, whereas in Merritt, the couple had separated. The agreement in Merritt was therefore enforceable. Where distinguishing operates, the previous precedent remains binding and a new precedent is created for the new set of facts. There are therefore two precedents rather than just one. Overruling is where a court with appropriate standing departs from a binding precedent because they are of the view that it should no longer be considered good law. Where a precedent has been overruled, it is no longer binding and the newly created precedent takes its place. So there remains just one precedent on the point of law. The basic rule is that a court must follow the precedents from a higher court, but they can overrule decisions from courts lower in the hierarchy. A basic outline of the hierarchy is, the Supreme Court, formerly House of Lords, the Court of Appeal, the Divisional Courts of the High Court, all other courts, county, crown, magistrates, tribunals. Where the precedent was set by a court of the same level, the court is generally bound by the previous decision, but this is subject to exceptions. Different considerations apply, depending on the level of court, as to whether the court may overrule a previous decision of a court of the same level. The House of Lords was replaced by the Supreme Court on 1 October 2009. The Supreme Court has the same jurisdiction as the House of Lords in terms of its ability to overrule the lower courts in addition to its own previous decisions. In 1966 the Lord Chancellor, Lord Gardiner, issued a practice statement allowing the House of Lords to overrule a previous decision where it appears right to do so. That is, where it would lead to injustice in a particular case or hamper the proper development of the law. This is known as the 1966 practice statement. Whilst the House of Lords had this power, they were reluctant to use it. In Nuller v DPP, 1973, they refused to overrule the controversial case of Shaw v DPP, 1962, despite the fact that the majority thought Shaw was wrongly decided. Lord Reed stated, In the general interest of certainty in the law we must be sure that there is some very good reason before we so act. In considering whether to use the 1966 practice statement, justices of the Supreme Court need to be mindful of the retrospective effect of their decisions. In Cunningham, 1982, the House of Lords refused to overrule the previous decision of R. V. Vickers, 1957, relating to the mens rea of murder. This was because of the retrospective effect it would have on those convicted of murder under the previous ruling and may have been subject to the death penalty. Despite the reluctance to use the 1966 practice statement, there have been a number of notable cases where the House of Lords have used their power. In British Railways Board v Harrington, 1972, the House of Lords used the practice statement to overrule Addy v Dumbreck, 1929, on an occupier's duty owed to trespasses. In Pepper v Hart, 1993, the Lords overruled Davis v Johnson, 1978, regarding the use of Hansard as an aid to statutory interpretation. In RVG and R, 2003, the House of Lords overruled MPC v Caldwell, 1982, in relation to the test of recklessness applicable for criminal damage. 
The Court of Appeal can overrule decisions made by the High Court. It is generally bound by its own previous decisions. Both the High Court and the Court of Appeal are subject to the exceptions set out in Young v. Bristol Aeroplane. This may allow them to overrule their own decisions in limited circumstances. The three exceptions are, 1. Where the previous decision was made per incurium. 2. Where a subsequent decision of the House of Lords was inconsistent. Or 3. Where there are two conflicting previous decisions. Per incurium means in error. If the previous decision of the Court of Appeal can be shown to be demonstrably wrong, the Court of Appeal may overrule it. It must relate to an error in the law, for example a statute or precedent had been overlooked. They cannot depart simply because they believe the outcome was wrong in principle or unfair. In Rickards v. Rickards, 1989, it was accepted that in exceptional circumstances and where it is clear that an appeal to the final appeal court is not possible, the Court of Appeal may overrule its previous decision. Reversing is where a court reaches a different decision in the same case on appeal. This may also involve overruling if the case has come from a court with the power to create precedents. For example, in Gillick v. West Norfolk, a Catholic mother of five daughters sought a declaration from the High Court that it would be unlawful for a doctor to give contraceptive advice to girls under 16 without parental knowledge or consent. The High Court refused the declaration. The Court of Appeal then reversed that decision and allowed the declaration. However, on appeal the House of Lords then reversed the decision of the Court of Appeal and set the law relating to when children are able to consent to their own medical treatment. In summary, distinguishing, overruling and reversing are all methods judges can use to avoid a binding precedent. Distinguishing can be used by any court, whereas the availability of reversing and overruling will depend upon where the court fits into the hierarchy. Departing from precedent is controversial as it involves judicial lawmaking and creates uncertainty in the law. This video is part of a series of videos on law from www.elawresources.co.uk. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel www.youtube.com slash at elawresources. It's free to do so and will help us to keep providing these videos. Check out our website which provides lecture outlines and case summaries. See also www.elawrevision.org.uk for revision games and quizzes. Thanks for watching.